Hey, I'm Owen. Hi, I'm Susanna. And this is the last page of the scene. Yeah. At long last. At long last. <laughs> How do you feel about it now that it's done? Um, pretty good. Yeah. Been waiting for that one for a while, yeah. so it feels nice to it be getting through it. It goes so much faster than I expect it to. Yeah. And this was weeks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I um you know, I was looking back at the videos we'd made so far mm-hmm. and um just kind of looking at how high up they'd stacked compared to what I expected them to be. Because in mm-hmm. my head, we've made like four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, and we just made more than I think I realized we had upon looking back on them. And I had the thought as I was doing that, each one of these is a page, right? Mm-hmm. And every two pages is a week. Mm-hmm. And we're like a month into these. Yeah. I or think like a month more. and a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um. I feel like a couple months by now. I yeah. feel like we started this back in July. So uh, what a poignant feeling for me. <laughs> yeah. It was a very tangible, very like, you know, I, I think I was looking at like the um, the folder full of thumbnails I'd made for them mm. or whatever. And in saving just one more to it, I was like, damn, there's a lot of these in here. Yeah. And I think more so I look at them and I'm like, this is a long time, yeah. right? And I always feel like less time has passed than has actually passed. Yeah. And for me, I guess, I don't know, it comes with this feeling of like, wow, time really marches on and we really do just like stack a bunch of pages up. Yeah. And they go so fast. And before I know it, like we're almost through a chapter. Right. Or we're almost through, you know, a scene that I'd been looking forward to for a really long time. Yeah. And it's not so much like, oh, damn, that's a lot of pages. It's more so like (laughs) there's less on the other side than there are on the side that are complete, I guess. Yeah. That's what I guess I'm, the feeling I'm starting to feel more and more strongly now. is yeah. um, That little bit of the melancholy of, like, arriving closer to an end. Yeah. It's like you feel the train pulling into the station. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. The station's a lot closer than I expected it to be. Yeah. Um, like, if you're having, like, a really good time on a road trip or something, and then yeah, you realize, yeah. like, you're almost there, and it's yeah. like, oh, damn, it's... <laughs> it's almost over. You know what I mean? It's um, it's a very odd feeling, um, and I think that I really that struck me. I think this is page like thirty seven in mm-hmm. chapter nineteen, and so there's less pages now in chapter nineteen that aren't done mm-hmm. than there are pages that are done. Right. Which means like volume six is almost over. Is it mm-hmm. six? Um, yes. So volume six is almost over, and you know, yeah. pretty soon there's there's just a chapter or two left, and it's. I don't know. Um, yeah. yeah. It is. It's very melancholy. It's a good word for it. Um, yeah. I don't know. And especially to get through a scene that meant so much, um, and now it's done. You know right. what I mean? And and I'm happy. I'm glad for how it came out. But mm-hmm. I think that's how it's always felt in making yeah. the comic. Because it's like, I don't know. When we started it out, it did feel very like, oh, well, we just got another page. We just mm-hmm. got another page. And after a while, it was just such a thing that we just kept marching on and doing. Yeah. And then in looking back on it, it was like, wow, we got through a chapter. Yeah. And then we got through a scene. Yeah. And, like, we we got through, like, a little moment between the two of them. Sure. And it was kind of crazy that, like, it just kept going. Yeah. And now that we're on this end of it, it's very alarming to look back and see how much there actually is yeah to see how much we've already done and it's like oh that won't be revisited yeah um we won't be coming back to whatever scene or moment and to get closer and closer to the end of what actually makes it the story of toy yeah it's kind of alarming it is alarming (laughs) it is really alarming it's it's a good feeling it it truly is but at the same time there are definitely moments where i'm like oh that really stacked up right we got (laughs) a lot further than i thought we would have in the time frame that i thought this was yeah and i mean it's it's especially strange in 2020 i think everything is a little like time warpy and oh yeah and and weird but um but yeah specifically to see uh you know and i felt that way since we started putting a page up early on the patreon right Mm -hmm. um and you know when you go to tag something when you post it on the patreon it like tells you how many times you've tagged it that before Mm -hmm. so when i tag an early page i put early page like on it and it's like it says like 80 Mm -hmm. something now and it's like oh damn we've been doing that for 80 (laughs) pages divided by two 40 weeks yeah that we've been doing this already that's crazy like yeah that didn't feel like that much time right had passed and it just I don't know, it's very alarming, um, 
how fast everything seems to be going mm-hmm. and how, I don't know, it, it just, <laughs> I really do feel the weight of like how much less time there is on the other side right. of this median yeah. where, you know, we are in the present and all the pages that are done are behind us and all the pages that aren't done are ahead of us and it's just so much shorter on the other side. Yeah. Not to be, um, <laughs> you know, not to be too fatalistic about it. Yeah. But, um, I, I don't even mean alarming in a fatalistic way. Sure. So much as like... When you really look back at how much you can get done in that amount of time. Yeah. And yet it's also not very much at all. It doesn't feel like much. It's just, I don't know, it, it kind of puts a lot of things into perspective. Yeah. And when it comes down to that, like, in a story format, a story is something that, like, you do go through very quickly when sure. you read it. Yeah. Um, the comic, like, I could probably reread the entire thing in a day. And, like, this took us ten years. Yeah. And that's kind of crazy. It but, is. like, as you, as you get to each part and you look at it, it's like, oh, that was, like, nothing. I, yeah. I did this whole chapter in, like, went a down, like, months. water. Yeah. Yeah. It felt like nothing. Yeah. But, like, at the time, it feels like so much. It does. Yeah. So. Well, in each page, it sure does feel like, wow, this, this did take me ten hours <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to do this page. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. But yeah. it's so addicting to that feeling of, like, done. Mm-hmm. Upload. You know what I mean? It, it's it's so addictive. But, um, you know, once it's done and you put it away, you go to sleep, you wake up the next day you kind of forget yeah. the tedium after a little bit. And it truly, when you look back, I don't know, not yeah. to, you know, not to press on it too much, but it really does. Um, it's, I, I think it's especially poignant and I feel it especially strongly right now because this scene was something I'd been so looking forward to. Yeah. So of course I have that kind of like, well, I was looking uh, forward to that. No. Yeah. <laughs> It's not quite that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's 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 a good thing. Yeah. It's definitely a good thing. Um, and I'm happy it's done. But yeah, it's it's really funny because like I don't know. In the end, there's a lot of other scenes that we're still looking forward to. There are there are some scenes that um even literally like the last page of the entire comic I'm looking forward to yeah. because I know what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm really excited to get to yeah, it so and true. to get to draw it. I have to say like <laughs> all of chapter 20 I'm really really excited for. <laughs> yeah. I'm really really excited for chapter 20. <laughs> and just as much as I felt really excited for this scene, mm-hmm. I've been looking forward to chapter 20 for so long. Yeah. And I've been looking forward to the epilogue for yeah. so long. And I'm really looking forward to the sequel. Yeah. So, I mean, it is a good thing. I think, um, you know, the way we structure what mm-hmm. we do, we're always super excited about what's going to come next because yeah. we're so, like... <sighs> Driven. Yeah. It's like, you know, when we... <sighs> When we, we write a story that is inherently self-indulgent. Yeah. It's inherently like, I want to make something that's exciting. And so when you have an exciting thought mm-hmm. um, that you plan to put in your story, of course it's going to be in the future. Right. And so if you're always like catering to yourself and mm-hmm. writing your stories based around something that's exciting to you right now, mm-hmm. then the future will always also be exciting. Right. Because that's where all those exciting moments are going to go. Right. <laughs> um, I, I, I feel like maybe that's too obvious <laughs> but you know what i mean so but just the way it's structured like anytime you feel good about an idea mm-hmm. you know that you have to look forward to that you yeah. know what i mean because it by product of the way that you can't do it now yeah there's never a time in comics where like something that you're excited for in this exact moment mm-hmm. can be instant gratification delivered mm-hmm. to you you know what i mean you always have to build to it there's always like there at least another 20 pages that have to come to set up that idea. Yeah. So it's like, I, I guess, knowing that literally there's no way to deliver to yourself the instant gratification of making an idea come into fruition right away. Mm-hmm. Um, there's always, it's just built naturally that you will always look forward to the future. Yeah. Because you just have to, you have to get there. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I think that's what makes comics so fun it's definitely what makes it so addictive to yeah. me yeah for sure yeah I, I don't think that i would have fell in love with any other medium as much as i fall in love with comics yeah because at least when making a comic i can constantly be excited for like the next page yeah the next scene yeah the next like little thing constantly can be something that i can like focus on yeah enjoy get excited for get amped up and like when it's done it's like the satisfaction is yeah, there yeah it's done yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. completion satisfaction yeah, yeah for sure and then like i come to the end of it it's like at least with that completion, like, I, I do get that little bit of, like, oh, the wistfulness of, like, yeah, no, it's oh, over. it is done. Yeah. And, you know, you, you kind of mourn something in small little 
parts. Yeah, because sure. Of, of course, like, there's always going to be something you mourn about it. Like, sure. right now, it's like, oh, this is the last time that we're going to see the office here. Yeah, this is the last time we do see Eli's office. And it's like, we only saw it for the first time so recently. Yeah. But it's like, what importance could it even possibly have for Liam? Yeah. It is such he a doesn't small work there. space. He specifically chose for his life not to work in this place. Yeah. So, for him, like, of course, he, he comes in occasionally to talk to his dad and especially when he doesn't live with his dad anymore and he's so frequently like well i'm on this side of town anyway i might as well drop in because i did want to talk to him and yeah i want to call him or whatever yeah <laughs> um that this is a scene that he would pick to go have those conversations but like mm. moving forward he is specifically not chosen to work here yeah and his life is taking him away from from this specific building yeah. do you know what i mean so yeah I, I find it kind of fun to think about that too um the fact that liam made the decision to not go into this place and spend the rest of his life here because yeah. this is like in some weird alternate universe he became a lawyer and is probably and working, in working in that back office yeah in matt's <laughs> office that's so true yeah and he will this building is not a part of his life no matter what decision he makes whether mm -hmm. or not he wants to go with milo you know yeah I mean? it's, it's truly like this is not this is not his future yeah even if it doesn't matter which side of the future he's trying to decide between now he falls right. on. Exactly. This yeah. is just not it. This is not it. You yeah. Know what I mean, so. The only importance of him being back in the office right here was for his conversation about Reva. Right, exactly. And it's very specifically that little bit of the coldness of an office building versus the comfort of some place that he grew up, yeah. the home that they lived in with Reva. Yeah. Like, that place makes it impossible to have conversations about Reva for yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. It's too familiar. Yeah. In a bad way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. So it needed to be a space that was more neutral for the yes, both of them yeah. in order to have this conversation. And also it's like, you know, it seems cold, mm -hmm. but like Liam thrives best with a little bit of boundaries. Yeah. Um, I think I made the joke to you back when we were doing the Christmas party scene. Um, how Roger would be Liam's favorite family member of Milo's, <laughs> right. which is so, it's funny and it's ironic because yeah. like, that's, that's Milo's his favorite <laughs> yeah. family member. And he's so like, oh, I, I don't like that guy. Like he's not, it's, it's, it's super, so cold. it's super uncomfortable. He's so like snobby. Yeah. Like you sit, you walk in the room and he's like, what a pleasure to see you again. And you're like, fuck you, Roger. Like, <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Mr. Sinclair. Um, but he's so, you know what I mean? So it's for Milo, that's like his least favorite family family yeah. member, quote-unquote. But Liam would like it because for him there's comfort in that. Yeah. He's very used to someone who has very strong boundaries, who is very, like, emotionally distant, mm -hmm. who is very, like... Honestly, we are more business partners than we are family. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because that's what he's kind of gotten used to. And for him, mm -hmm. like, that's his first level of comfort before yeah. he can then, like, start to open up and get closer. Do you know right. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So for him... um. Milo's family is actually kind of uncomfortable for him because they're too familiar too quickly. Yeah. Um, which is fine. He's, like, gone over it. It's not yeah. It's not detrimental to his, right. you know, to his ability to form friendships with them. But Yeah, it's very obvious. Liam gets along very well with Dylan. Yes, yeah. Um, Dylan is a little cold, but yes. he's also way too familiar yeah, 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 <laughs> in a lot yeah, of ways. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yet Liam was able to actually really adapt to him, sure. get along with him really well. I think it took him longer, though, yeah. than it would have otherwise had Dylan had a little bit more of a distance. Had Dylan been more the kind of dad that he would have expected him to be, mm -hmm. um, I think he probably would have liked him sooner. Um, but it yeah. doesn't super matter. That's just Liam. That's just his comfort yeah. level. He, he thrives on a slight professionalism. Yeah. He likes the, <laughs> the distance. You know what I mean? But like when it comes to the twins, like it took him... And I think even now, he's a little like, they're a lot, huh? Yeah. <laughs> like, teenage girls sure are a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and you have two of those running around. So that's, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> they don't stop touching me. And I don't, it's fine. I'm going to let them. But I kind of don't love it. I just, just get your hands out of my hair for two seconds. Yeah. Okay, braids? Ugh. <laughs> Fine. All right. Sure. <laughs> Great. I'm going to take these out the second movie. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? And he's, like, fine. He likes them enough. But, mm -hmm. like, there really is, like, for him. He's like, I liked Roger. <laughs> yeah. Like, Roger keeps his distance. He doesn't even, like, really want to be close to me. Yeah. He just wants to say hi and walk away. It's great. Can we go back there? That would be great. I would love to. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So, um, I forget why I brought that up. Oh, so when, um... So when he's back in, in this office, right, mm -hmm. this is a good place for him to rekindle 
the ability to have conversations that grow for him because his his comfort level comes from a place of strict boundaries. These mm-hmm. are our boundaries. We have a desk between us. Like this is the way that our conversation goes. It's kind of cold, but in a good way. Yeah. It's just you know what I mean. This is a this is a very comforting place for him to start to open up a little bit. Yeah. Even if it didn't. I don't think it went as well as he hoped it would. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, I think in the end, Liam has like a set a set amount of things that he can deal with. Sure. And like when it comes to socializing, he does need it to be in like very he's on specific a timer. terms. Yeah. yeah. He's it's <laughs> terms and a timer for sure. Yeah. 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 I think that always has been his thing right yeah. from the beginning. Yeah. And that's one of the fun things, like before we even started the comic like that was one of my favorite things about Liam it's very funny to me <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's definitely like a um I guess that's like a very exaggerated version of me um, yeah where it's just like you no know, I can deal with three of these yeah. <laughs> three things and then I'm out <laughs> you know what I mean it's very uh yeah I, I, it, to me because it's pushed to a very comedic level mm-hmm. I crack up at it because I, <laughs> I see myself in it and then it's a, such a goofy version of myself that it's like <laughs> yeah <laughs> I like to torture him through <laughs> through my own past experiences and stuff, but um, I feel his energy. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. But yeah, so so yeah, so this is um, it's, it's a lot of lasts on this page. Last time mm-hmm. we see this office, first time we see Eli smile. I think in modern times, yeah, um, which is fun. Yeah, that was a very specific choice because I, I think even in the sketchbook where you give me the thumbnails, yeah. it's like Eli finally smiles. Yeah, and it's like. Yeah, yeah. Finally smiles. Finally smiles. Um, we will see he, him again. We will see Matt again mm-hmm. um, before Toy is done. But but this is the last time we'll see this setting. Looking back on this chapter, there's a lot of lasts. I'm not sure a lot of the characters we've seen in this chapter we'll see again. Yeah. Um, well, we will see the twins, but I don't think... A lot of, like, the main family members yeah. we'll see at least once more. Yeah. Um, it's really... Hard to believe it's already, yeah. like, chapter 19. Yeah. I, I've seen multiple stories go through this uh, same exact feeling, and it is always very interesting to get to that same place yourself. Yeah. Because it, it's so much easier to, like, witness it and be able to be like, oh, no, that's going to be awful. Yeah. And then when you get to it, you're like, oh, wow, sure is a feeling. I know. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's odd. It is a little odd. From this perspective, mm-hmm. um. I think it's kind of fun to talk about um, some plans we have for future projects. Mm-hmm. Um, so while we're, let me let me stop thinking about how many lasts are in this <laughs> yeah. chapter. You know what I mean? And think about instead the fact that um, so Liam is beginning what will be his actual career. Yes, it's um, it is the the beginning of you know he stumbled into it kind of accidentally and kind of a little against his initial will <laughs> yeah but a pushed into it a little pushed into it but it is something that even he admits pretty quickly that despite the fact that he wouldn't have done it himself mm-hmm. he really likes it mm-hmm. and for him it's like something that he could see himself actually being passionate about yeah which for him is not common He's not often passionate about a lot of things. So yeah. even even though it's not something he would have had the drive to get into, he will see himself thriving in it, I think. Yeah. Um, which is fun. Mm-hmm. It's fun to see him doing something he loves. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun to see him um, be passionate about something. Yeah. And I think um, I'm really excited to see more of that from him mm-hmm. going forward, to see him actually starting to build up actual passion. Because yeah. I think at this point it's all so new. That he's a little nervous yeah. still, and he's not quite, and it, he's got a little bit of imposter syndrome where it's, um, he's not quite accepted yet that this is real. Yeah. And that he won't, um, maybe be caught out very shortly that he didn't actually write a book. It's, <laughs> it's just like a pile of scribbles and <laughs> I put a lot of words in there. It's just words, but they don't actually make sense. And I've tricked them into thinking that <laughs> they were a story somehow, but that they're not actually that good. Anyway, he's, um, I think he's a little, like, he's a little nervous that mm-hmm. it's not actually going to pan out despite the fact that it is officially panning out right? yeah um but i'm really excited to play with him actually being passionate um at the same time that i'm really excited to flesh out some of his stories yeah <laughs> um so we've seen a little bit of you know little snippets of like older stories that he's written mm-hmm. um with like um the cult yeah uh, i think we saw that in chapter i want to say eight I think eight. Was it yeah. the beginning of chapter eight? I think it was the beginning of chapter eight because um 
Seven was seven days a week. Yes. And then eight was behind the eight ball. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yep. behind the eight ball was him being behind the eight ball. Yeah, yeah, he yeah was, exactly. Yeah. He was writing a cult perspective of how he felt about right, right, right. in his current line of career. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. So um, so we see like little snippets of his little tiny story that he wrote. Yeah. And looking back on that, that was some of my favorite stuff to do. Yeah. Um, to kind of push toy out of like a um because i really like toy and i like it's very slice of life it's very based in realism it's very like Mm -hmm. this is just following these people day to day or maybe even sometimes month to month yeah um and describing like a really specific part of their very normal lives yeah and i really enjoy that but um um, i'm really excited to push myself into um kind of doing some stories that are not slice of life Mm -hmm. because they are liam's stories right um (laughs) so i'm really I'm really looking forward to that. And yeah, I'm very excited for that actually. I um I really want to um I think the goal um it'll be a little restructured from what we're doing right now. Mm-hmm. But I think the goal is to work on some of these alongside Toy. Mhm. And also Toy 2. Right. Um which is the sequel we're we're kicking around and mm-hmm. um but I think we're planning to start them a lot sooner. Right. Um, even long before Toy ends. I'd really like to dive... I'd like, I'd like to dive into the story he's just got published. Mm-hmm. Or he's working on getting published right now. Mm-hmm. That he's just signed his contract for. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm just... I'm really thrilled. Yeah, me um, too. <laughs> I'm thrilled, one, t- to write something that's, like, totally different. Mm-hmm. I'm really thrilled to write... Because Liam is very into horror. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm really thrilled to write more horror aspects. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to be allowed to kill characters. <laughs> <laughs> that has been a restriction in Toy. <laughs> I, I did make a rule at the beginning that no characters were allowed to die. I wasn't allowed to, to yeah, kill any characters, and I, I begrudgingly yeah. accepted it. I don't think I was super motivated to. <laughs> I don't think it was I think like... it was like a joke for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a joke. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no. I I don't think I ever had any sincere plans to actually yeah. kill anyone. Um but uh but I was I did feel kinda like, oh, I would love to have like <laughs> I don't know, I'd love to really like tackle some other stuff. So I'm really excited to to have that restriction lifted for me. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited to play with horror that's also funny. Mm-hmm. Like I really want to do like a really <laughs> weird blend of comedy and horror. Yeah. I'm really interested. And that is so Liam to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really excited to do other projects from this perspective of it being his writing. Mm-hmm. I'm excited for like, I don't, is this weird to say? I'm excited to be that far removed from it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. I, I enjoy to be so, like to be one step extrapolated from writing it. Yeah, Does I think that, make that makes a, I think that makes a lot of sense cuz there's something a little more fun about thinking of something through someone else's perspective. Yeah. But then thinking of a story through someone else's perspective on top of that. It's very, I don't know. I really like it. I don't know if that makes like um if that's like universally exciting, but like I'm <laughs> very like into the idea of it to like to write a story and then also have like an extra step of like how would Liam write it though? Yeah. Like to, and that kind of and how do his past experiences kind of inform it? And I don't think it'll be important right. or super necessary for um I mean, it is still you writing it. Yeah, it's it is still, still me. me drawing it. Exactly. It. It's, it's, it'll be <laughs> technically really no different than than anything else we make. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But, like, I don't know. I guess it really is the brainstorming aspect. Yeah. That it really... It only really matters to me in that moment. Yeah. You won't need to actually think about it from Liam's perspective in order to, like, follow it or really even to feel like it informs any of the story or anything. It's just... Yeah. But for me, I feel like it's a really fun... It's a fun way to approach it, mm-hmm. and I'm looking forward to, like, um, it's it's like a puzzle, I guess. Mm-hmm. It's like imposing a puzzle on myself for what would normally just be, like, work, mm-hmm. which is, it's fun work, but, like, it would normally just be work, but it's, like, an extra hoop I have to jump through. Yeah. Which is exciting to me. I don't know. Yeah. I actually agree with that. There's, like, a little bit of that uh, inception going on. Yeah, a little bit, Yeah. You get to explore something and think about it in different perspective, but yeah. you still get to have the fun of making the thing. Yeah, and it still is just at the end of the day, I'm just addicted to making comics. Yeah. And it's going to be really fun <laughs> to make a, to- a totally different genre of comic. You yeah. You know what I mean? So. And you kind of make them related to each other in that way, even yeah. though it's, like, technically 
So our second story is Death of Caleb. Yep, the Death of Caleb Perkins. Um, and then that's like technically not related to Toy, right? But it is. It's at the same time because yeah. like we it, we do consider it a story written by Liam. Yeah. But like technically the story doesn't really take place in their universe. No, no, no. It's it's like yeah, it takes place in a universe within their universe. Mm-hmm. But like in their universe it will be a thing that exists. Yeah. I don't know, it's just fun. Yeah. That's I super agree. fun to me. Um I like the yeah, idea that most comics that we make in the future will actually take place in the same universe. Yeah. I really like um like I like what Stephen King does with his books, how they yeah. all take place in the same universe. Mm-hmm. Um and a lot of them take place in Dairy, Maine. you mean? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um so they all take place in, in but even when they're not in Maine, mm-hmm. they are within the same universe. Like yeah. all this stuff does happen within the actual same universe. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that. Yeah, I actually. So I haven't read a lot of Stephen King personally. I've read too much. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I have really enjoyed that fact. Like every yeah. time I learn something about the Stephen King, there's always like some part of a story is related to some other part of it. Yeah. And it's like oh. That's awesome. If not directly referential, then you can just assume that, like, the monster of this story Mm -hmm. is made of the same sort of stuff Mm -hmm. that makes the monster of another story. It's, like, basically, like, there's a running theme throughout his stories that basically evil can be personified Mm -hmm. and can exist tangibly in the universe and then affect reality in Mm -hmm. some way. Um, Whether it's, like, it's not, like, necessarily demonic Mm -hmm. or really even, like, alien yeah. in this in the, the, like a physical some of them are actually literal aliens that come yeah. from outer space but like I, I that was one of the books i read <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, dream catcher yep. yeah 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 so some of sometimes it literally is aliens yeah but like otherwise it is like an alien un unearthly mm-hmm. otherworldly presence but it is for most part it's evil mm-hmm. incarnate do you know what i mean that just exists and so like if you're wondering like what is the the bad guy in this story? Mm-hmm. It's that. And is that the same bad guy as what's in this other story? Not really. It's not like the same entity, mm-hmm. but it is kind of the same entity. It's like the same. Like related. It's, it's made of the same stuff. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And, it, and you can assume that in this universe, both of these things did happen. Like right. if they had made the news, yeah. someone in in within that universe would have seen both news stories. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I really like that. I like I like this concept of like, all your books take place in the same universe. Yeah. And I really like this idea that, like, any comics we make going forward will all take place in the same universe for yeah. Liam, and he's sat down. And <laughs> and so I'm really excited for that. I'm excited to, like, carry this thread between them. Mm-hmm. And then also, on top of that, I'm excited for when it dips back to Toy, mm-hmm. that you just see Liam writing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm really excited to, like, <laughs> revisit him and to kind of show, like, what his life looks like. Once this gets folded into it more. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, because so far we've kind of seen, um, you know, we've seen him like sit down and write. Mm-hmm. We've seen him um, use it as like a stress relief or use it as a way to um, dodge social situations <laughs> or yeah. um, use it to, to give to Milo or to share with um, Milo's family. Like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I guess you want to see what I'm really passionate about? Okay, you can read yeah. my stories, I guess. You know what I mean? Um, it's clearly a thing that he does as a pastime. Yeah. Just to fill the time. Yeah. He he does it to avoid other things. Mm-hmm. He does it because it's more enjoyable to him than the things he should be doing. Yeah. And then he <laughs> it obviously enjoys um, the reaction he gets, mm-hmm. where it's like people will be like grossed out by it, and he's like, yeah, yeah good. <laughs> he watches Dylan read it, and he's like, good. <laughs> I'm glad that freaked you out. That's really good. Yeah. I'm glad that now you fear me as a human. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad. That Thank you for warning your son about being near me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really glad that now you folded a healthy fear of me into the way that you see me as a person. <laughs> I appreciate that reality. Um, so I'm really excited to see more of that um, pulled apart mm-hmm. um, f- now from a more professional aspect, yeah. um, especially as it will start to become something that he's obligated to do, um, that's part of his career to do. Yeah. I actually really like getting to see what Liam becomes. Yeah. As a result of just getting these stories out of his head. Yeah. And actually feeling more confident. Yeah. Being able to come into his own. It's weird to think of it that way. Yeah. Because he is so he's been this for like ten years. Yeah. That it's in it's such like a um like a coming of age story. Yeah. That it's weird to think that like he is at the end of his transformation from this story. Mm-hmm. This is the end of his growth 
from this story. Mm -hmm. But there's he's not he's not gonna die. Yeah, there's still so much more change that he yeah. has to um, he's throughout his entire life. So there's still so much change that I mean nobody stops growing just because they reach like the end of an arc. So yeah, it's so real. <laughs> yeah, so it is. I'm I'm I am also excited to see what kind of person he becomes as he starts sharing what's in his head more mm -hmm. outside of himself. <laughs> he's such a reclusive person that. Yeah. Um, that I think he will be somewhat changed, you're right, by making what's in his head less private, I guess. Yeah, getting it out there. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I think what's really cute to me about him is that um, he does spend so much of his time, and I always actually really liked this about Liam as a character, he spends so much of his time being inside of his own head, mm -hmm. and like not being open about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And so the second that, like, someone does read something of his and, like, does get to see something that's going on in his head, mm -hmm. they're always like, oh. Mm -hmm. And he always gets that, like, oh, you you now perceived me. <laughs> yeah, oh, you perceived me. Oh, so you're perceiving me now? <laughs> yeah, I like that he's, um... Um, I think that there was some concern for him mm -hmm. um, in his stories being shared, like, without him knowing yeah. Or um, being sent to publishers without him knowing. And, mm -hmm. and of course, it obviously was not correct. You yeah. Know, that's kind of the point. You yeah. Know what I mean? um, it was meant to be a wrong thing to have done. Yeah, it was not correct to mm -hmm. have done. But at the same time, like, if, I think there was definitely some concern for him. Like, oh, no, that was private for him. And it's like, yeah. well... It it hasn't been yeah. necessarily private. It's been something that he's been happy to share. Yeah. It's just that his social circle is so small. Mm -hmm. Um not necessarily because he wants it that way, but mm -hmm. because he's not very good at yeah, it he being doesn't, bigger. He doesn't socialize. Yeah. He doesn't try to reach out to people. Yeah. Um he's kinda of bad at reaching out. Yeah. And that's just, it's not even that he wants that. He likes people. Yeah. He does like socializing. Yeah. But he's very awkward with people. He's very awkward. He's an awkward dude. And so, like, for Milo to have done that, a large part of Milo doing it was him thinking, like, well, Liam gives these stories to so many people. Milo realized, like, Liam likes when people read his stories. Yeah, for sure. And Milo thought, like, the greatest thing I could do is have more people read his stories. Right. Let me go ahead and put this out there. Right. And then, problem solved, he also gets his dream job right. of people reading his stories. <laughs> exactly. Like, it was It was truly... Milo has a lot of, like, leaps of logic where yeah. he, like, skips some steps and, and then puts he doesn't, his foot in his mouth. He doesn't think to ask people sometimes. Yeah. He'll think, like, okay, I know the perfect solution to this, and he'll go chase it. Right. And, like, maybe he should ask for permission, but then he also has this, like, second thought of, like, no, a surprise is oh, really surprise, cool. Because surprises are so much fun. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. He I think, likes surprises. Exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the surprise itself is, like, part of the gift, right? Yeah. And it's like, no, not correct. <laughs> it should, <laughs> it's not a good move. Should not have been that way. And it's like, it's not that he's so disconnected that he hasn't correct, identified what the correct gift was, right? Yeah. That it is a good action, but maybe it should have come with encouragement instead yeah. of in choosing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think, too... He doesn't come to the realization that the surprise isn't welcome until it's already very far into it. Yeah. They're at the wedding and Liam's already overwhelmed by things. Sure. And he wants to even say then, like, oh, I just realized, like, I probably should tell you about this. Yeah. Because now I realize you're going to come home to that. Right, right, right. But Liam's already so done at that point. Right. That, like, there was no good. Right, right. Him. Maybe just give him a couple more yeah. <laughs> hours of peace. Yeah, for sure. And the unfortunate thing is, like, yeah, had they had the conversation before, Liam probably would have talked him out of sending them. Yeah. Liam probably would have just been like, oh, no, I'll just keep these and hoard them and never show anyone. Yeah. And it's like, that wouldn't have necessarily been good for him either. Yeah. It's it's not the right thing to have done. Um, yeah, it's definitely by no means justified. Yeah. By, oh, it, came, it worked out for the best, so yeah. it, it was a good choice. But it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because it's done. So yeah. now you keep going forward. And you yeah. have to take, like, oh, but I actually... There are some things about this that are good. I guess mm -hmm. it's, like, the message of this page. Yeah. Where it's, like... Exactly, Just yeah. because... Um, just because something sucked mm -hmm. and had parts of it that were really bad, actually... Yeah. Doesn't necessarily mean that you can't reach through it mm -hmm. and find what was good and then own that 
Mm -hmm. and then move forward with holding desperately onto those good things. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, um... Yeah, that's that's exactly what I was even thinking, was just, like, the whole point of Neela even telling him these things is just, like, sometimes things are going to be awful. Yeah. It's going to seem like the worst. You will make the wrong choice. Mm -hmm. You will make a decision that had you had the, what, the knowledge you have now, mm -hmm. you could have done way better. Yeah. You you will look back on your decisions and say, I made the wrong choice and failed. Yeah. But what are you going to do about it? Yeah. And sometimes your partner makes a wrong decision yeah. and the wrong decision affects you. Yeah. Sometimes they'll make a decision for you about something that largely only affects you over them. Sure. And like, all you can do is just say like, please communicate. Right. And you just have to keep reaffirming that over and over. Exactly. Communicate. And in, in, in communicating, in choosing to communicate, mm -hmm. at least you have the ability to improve it, mm -hmm. to get better, to grow mm -hmm. and to find the good in it. Mm -hmm. To take that and say, more of this, less of the other thing that was bad, mm -hmm. actually. And we'll build on this specifically, and we will go forward into something that's overall good. Yeah. So as long as you have the ability to grow and to make things better, mm -hmm. then do it. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes, communicate. But as long as you're alive and you're willing mm -hmm. to talk and you're willing to communicate, then you should yeah. And you should find the good in it and at least move on and grow. Yeah. And honestly, like, the only thing that ever stops you is loss. That's an important thing that Eli wants to get across there. Yeah. Yeah. So. So, yeah. So that's that scene. That's really, a really heavy scene that you wanted to have for a long time. Yeah, closing the book on it, finally. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm feeling pretty good about it. And I'm Me looking too. forward to the next one. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> so thank you, by the way, if you got to the end of this. I appreciate yeah. you watching. Thank you. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Have a good one. Have a good one. <laughs>